Hello there. Through this presentation, we are going to learn about a very important and significant concept in English grammar called auxiliary verbs. So, let us see what is the concept of auxiliary verbs through this presentation. Okay. So, here what we see is the concept of auxiliaries. Now, auxiliary is a helping element that adds meaning to the basic meaning of the main verb in a clause. Now, there are main verbs in clauses, that is sentences. For example, he brings me a bag. He brings a bag. Okay, so the main verb is brings. Now, auxiliary are those that help the word bring in other sentences. So, let us see what it is all about. It's a verb that conveys the tenses. It allows us to identify the tenses, the moods, the voices, that is active voice or passive voice or person or the number in a particular sentence. There are mainly two types of auxiliaries and they are, there are two types, okay. They are primary auxiliaries and modal auxiliaries. So, these are the two types of auxiliaries. So, now let us see each one in greater detail. Okay. So, primary auxiliaries. They are primary because they are basic. For example, the to be form, the to do form, the to have, will. When these are followed by another verb. So, these are the four and when these are followed by another verb, that's a full verb. Auxiliary is an attachment. But there are full verbs in order to form a, either a question, a negative sentence, a compound sentence or the passive sentence. So, these are primary auxiliaries. So, which are they? They are four. That is be, do, have and will. So, let's see each one. This is the be. That is is, are, was, were, been, being. Been is the um, uh, past participle. And being is the present participle of the to be form. Similarly, we have do which goes as do, does, did. There could be negative also, doesn't, didn't. Okay, so these are negatives also. Alright, for each of them, even for the to be form, even for the do form. Now for the next one that is have, have, has, had, having or it could be haven't, hasn't, hadn't, etc. So you have the nots also in that the negatives. Okay. And the third one is the will. Now, this will also comes in modal auxiliaries, but there is a difference. Okay. We shall now see each one in greater detail. These are examples of primary auxiliaries. So, now let's see the first one that is B. All right, now let us see all the examples that come as primary auxiliaries of the to be form. Look at these sentences. I am writing. So, am is the auxiliary here. It is the present form of to be. See the second sentence. He is writing, isn't he? So, now is is the primary auxiliary and it is used twice here. One is the positive, that is he is writing. Then isn't to form the question tags also. So, isn't he? Look at the next third one. They are writing. So, R is the primary auxiliary which is the to be form. He was writing. Was is the primary auxiliary of the to be form. They were writing. So, were. Letter was being. If you see now here in the passive, we told you that even the voice can be understood with the help of auxiliary. So, letter was being so, you have was as well as being written by her. So, this indicates that it is the passive voice. Look at this question also that is formed. Aren't you playing today? So, are you not? Alright. So, this is aren't you playing today? So, it forms a question too. So, this is uh, you must understand whenever you see these words, immediately you should say, okay, this is the primary auxiliary of the to be form. Alright. We move on to the next one that is the do forms. This is very simple. I do pray daily. So, do is used as it is. Okay. They do not come. See the negative. They do not come every day. Look at the third one. 
he does not all right because it is singular and in the present tense so he does not write nowadays she did write to them all right he writes doesn't he see this question tag and then you have the question form also does he play football all right so these are the various forms and immediately you should say that okay these are all the primary for auxiliary forms of to do next we'll see the have all right i have written so have is there see it is used with the proper verb that is written all right have written they have eaten i have she had sung it he has gone there you have done your work haven't you all right so you see here haven't you it's a question tag all right you can also ask a question with using have haven't you done your work all right so you can see everywhere it is also used to form question sentences interrogative sentences all right now we'll see the last one that is will see here i will complete the task okay will complete they will play football that is tomorrow or something like that so it's giving you a time reference all right now this is not a modal auxiliary even in modal auxiliary this will comes okay the word will comes as a modal auxiliary also but it has different functions okay those are modes of talking they are modes of transaction that's why they are called modal auxiliaries but this is just a primary auxiliary which is telling you about a future tense all right please understand this is just telling you about the future tense that's it i will complete the task maybe tomorrow or later today they will play football in the near future he will write to us won't he okay he will write to us today won't he all right so will write and won't he is the negative form of will and also asked as a question tag all right so these were all the examples of the primary auxiliaries to be to do to have and will these are the four primary auxiliaries we shall now move on to learn what are modal auxiliaries as i told you these are auxiliaries which are going to help us to have a mode of transaction have a particular way of transacting or communicating okay so let us see it is a verb that is used with another verb definitely auxiliaries please understand these are attachments that are used with another verb they may not have an identity of their own they need another big verb a proper main verb okay now what is their function to express a mood or tense now let's see mood it is expressing the mood or the way in which the transaction in what with what purpose the transaction or communication is happening okay so let's see here we are going to do them uh, uh, going to do this model model auxiliaries of the different types so first is the can and the could all right and the may and the might can and could if you see could is a past form of can and might is the past form of may all right but there are different ways in which it is used now can and could can be showing ability i can do this work i cannot do this work all right so it can i couldn't understand shows inability of understanding or ability shows ability or inability if you say cannot it shows inability couldn't it shows inability but they stand for ability whether it's there or not may and might show probability it may rain today it might not rain today okay so it shows probability or improbability so it can also come with the word not to show improbability all right so you see here now can and may can also be used for permission for example now see may i come in can he do this work all right can i come in actually we usually use may for permission all right can is seldom used but they still say i could still use can for permission but they are negative forms that is cannot with be impossibility impossibility or i cannot do it there is inability all right and impossibility it shows but may not is showing improbability all right cannot is impossibility may not that is it's improbable that it would rain okay it may not rain improbability all right so these are the different ways in which can could may and might may be used okay now we shall now move on to the next type now these are the shall should 
the will and the would. Now, they all seem to be the future tense. Okay, They all depict the future tense. However, they will show you the mood also. It's not just the tense that they show. It is showing you the mood and the purpose for which the communication has happened. So, let us see now. We shall now first see the shall for what it is used. Can you see the first sentence? You shall not beat her again. Shall not. Okay. Now, that is command. It's not really telling you future tense. Okay. It may imply that in future you will not do it. But you shall not. Look at the mood. It is a commanding mood. Okay. I shall do this for you. It's a promise. I shall do this for you. All right. So even if you have to promise somebody, you say, I shall do it. It may not be in the near future, whatever, but I shall do it for you. Okay. So more than the tense, it is also telling you the function or the mode at, uh, with which it is said. They shall be punished for this. Okay. It's a threat. All right. They shall be punished for this. Okay. So, you can use shall for these three functions. These are the three modes for which shall is usually used. Now, let's see will. Okay, We'll see will, shall and will. Okay. Will is used for I will try harder next time. Now, see, though it is indicating the future tense, it is showing you will or the volition or the, uh, you know, uh, the hard, the aim. That the person is showing here. Okay, I will try harder next time. It is showing volition. Voluntarily, I'm doing it. Okay, she will read books throughout the day. Now, she will read. Now, this is, you know, this is a kind of habit that she has. She will read books throughout the day now. Okay, that's a habit. That will be it, I guess. Okay, assumption. I'm guessing. it. That will be it. This is, and when you say, I guess, it un, it's understood that it's an assumption. It's not a future tense. That's it, I understand. Okay, like that. So, that will be it, I guess. Assumption. Will you take a walk with me? This is an invitation. Will you take a walk with me? All right. So, you can use it as an invitation also. Now, we shall see should. We did, we finished shall, but see now should is again used for something else. Now, shall and should, the though should looks like a past form of shall. See, the purpose for which should is used are different. Okay. So, you see here, you should win the match tomorrow. There is no other way. It's a compulsion. They should obey us. After all, it's an obligation. You're supposed to obey us. Okay. They should obey us. Should it rain, our plans will fail. Now, see, we talk like this also. This is a condition. Should it rain? If it rains, our plans will fail. So, should it rain? Our plans will fail. So, you see how should is used? All right. It's different from the word shall. All right. Now, you see how would is used. It's a past form of will. We all know this. Would you like to join me for tea? It's a request. So, you see both are requests and the last one is showing wish. I wish you would not interfere okay so would is used in these two ways as polite request or as a wish though it is the past form of will so hope you have understood these four forms shall should will and would all right so this is how it is used so would is though it is a past form of will it is used for polite request would you like to join me for tea would you please help me for the, with this? Or I wish you would not interfere. Okay, again, would is used. Now, let's go on to see the next two. That is the must and the ought to. Now, these two are put together. Both of them more or less indicate the same mood. But let us still see. Okay, where is must used? Now, look at these sentences. I must look after the kitten. Okay, I must look after the kitten. It's a necessity because the kitten needs me. All right. Now, obligation, she must do this for the country. So, looking at the mood of the situation, you use the word. They must have completed the task. You must have. Logical certainty. certainty because now, the work is, I mean, it's already past the time. So, the, by now, they must have completed the task. So it's a logical end, okay? Logical certainty. Similarly, ought to. Ought to is used in two ways, in two uh, situations. That is, we ought to respect our national flag. So, ought to, okay? It's an obligation. So, you see, must is also used as an obligation. 
and auto is also used. So you can select the word that you want to use, either must or ought to. All right. So see, these are giving you our uh, modal auxiliaries are giving you various ways in which you can express what you wish to express. Okay, probability. The play ought to be very interesting. You know, it could be. You can also use the word could. All right, or you can use the word ought to. Okay, or may because probability is for may. The play may be very interesting. Okay, but ought to be very interesting. So it's a probability or. Uh, you say, I'm coming with you, but it ought to be very interesting. Huh? Otherwise, you see. So, there is a kind of compulsion also if you see here, but probability it ought to be more interesting. Okay. Now, let's see the used to or need and dare. Now, see how we use this. Huh? Used to. I used to do something like this. I used to. He is used to. All right. They both are used together. I used to read a lot of books. So, I used to do it. But now I'm not doing it. Right now I'm not doing it. It's a discontinued habit. Then it, this used to exist here before. There used to be a lake here before. Okay. So discontinued existence. All right. So used to could be a discontinued habit. It could be used to indicate that. Or it could be used to indicate the discontinued existence. Okay. Now let's see the need. Need could be used to uh, used along with do. Or two. Now let's see how. See here. I need to write to the authorities. Here need is used with two. So again, see necessity or obligation. So instead of must or ought to, you can also write need to. I need to write. So it is showing you either necessity or it is showing an obligation. You select. They don't need to hurry. There is no need to hurry. Okay. So the, you are using now with the do. They don't need to hurry. So, necessity or obligation. So, you see, uh, uh, there are so many options that you can use for necessity or obligation. So many options. You can use need to. All right. You can use must. You can use ought to. All right. So, you select whichever word you wish to use. But use the right words. Okay. Now, see this. Need I write this? Is there a need to write this? Am I obliged to write this? The same function. Okay, now the last one we are going to do is dare. Dare means are you brave enough to do something like that? Okay, dare not do this. I'm not brave enough, okay, to do it. See this? He dare not speak to me. He's not, he, he, he's not brave enough to speak to me. How dare he trouble that animal? How can he be so brave enough to trouble that animal? How dare? Okay, so daring is to brave. She dare not harm him. All right. Now, once we have understood all these auxiliaries, so we see that the auxiliaries are of two types, the primary auxiliaries and the modal auxiliaries. Primary auxiliaries are four. And usually, they indicate the tense or the negatives or the active passive. And the modal auxiliaries indicate the mood of the transaction as well as the mode. It helps us to select the mode of transaction. Okay. So, having understood all these things, I thank you for all your attention.